Okay, so here we go. Let's. Um, I just want to read a couple of verses. One from uh, Matthew chapter seventeen, and verse, um, you know, verses uh, fourteen onwards. You know, um, that incident is about uh, uh, this person, the father and the child and the son actually, and then they come and they. Uh, the father says, you know, we brought um, my. I brought my son to your disciples, but they could not. Cure. They could not cast out the demon that was troubling. So, can you please help? And the Lord Jesus um, does that. Uh, he can't rebuke the demon, and then it goes out of him, and the child is set free. Right? Then the disciples in verse nineteen. Okay, so we are reading Matthew seventeen and verse nineteen. Then, then the disciples came to Jesus and privately uh, and said, "Why could we not cast it out?" Okay, so um, they are asking. Uh, why could why could we not do it? You did it with the word. Then so Jesus says to them, because of your unbelief, you know, verse 20, because of your unbelief, for assuredly I say to you, if you have faith as a mustard seed, uh, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you. Um, and so on. And then verse 21, it says, uh, therefore this, however, this kind does not go up except by prayer and fasting. Okay, so, so he's talking to them and he says, um, he answers the question which the disciples ask, you know, why could we not cast it out? And he says, it's because of your unbelief. And then he again talks about, you know, this kind does not go out. Well, people have said that, you know, he's referring to uh, maybe a kind of uh, demons, but that doesn't really make sense because he's given us the authority um, to cast out. Um, and... Um, the only conclusion is maybe is referring to the unbelief, right? This kind of unbelief that needs to dealt with, that needs to be dealt with in our own lives. So, <clears throat> so, so the disciples, you know, if you look at it, they were actually doing a lot of ministry, the kind of ministry that uh, Jesus did. They were actually doing it. Uh, but, however, you know, when it came to this particular situation. Um, they could not, and the Lord says it was because of their unbelief. Okay, so, so one wonders, right? So, disciples had a kind of unbelief that they themselves did not realize, right? They they didn't realize that they had unbelief, and uh, so the Lord says, you know, this needs to be dealt with. This kind of unbelief needs to be dealt with. If you look at Mark chapter nine. And verse 23, uh, Mark 9 and verse um, uh, 23, right? So the, the uh, 23, I think, yeah. Um, 23, Jesus says, if you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. Um, so verse 24, again, it deals with the father and some condition to do with the child um, uh, you know, being held bondage. Uh, a deliverance kind of a situation, a like need for deliverance. So verse 24, uh, immediately the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. And he says, I believe, but Lord, you know, help my unbelief. So he says, you know, there, I, I do believe, but there seems to be uh, a kind of unbelief that needs to be dealt with in my own life. You know, so maybe we are we, we could be in a place where saying that you know I I do believe, but I do sense a kind of unbelief in certain areas when it comes to certain things. I'm able to trust God. I'm able to have faith in the Lord for you know maybe you know one two three four five. But when it comes to six seven eight, I have a problem. You know I uh, there's a sense of unbelief, right? Or uh, and that kind of unbelief maybe we are unaware of. And uh, you know, only when we face the severity of the situation, we 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 realize that hey, I'm struggling with this kind of unbelief. I'm not able to trust the Lord in these matters, right? Only when we face the challenges, we realize. Um, sometimes it is you know we know that there is an unbelief in that area because uh, maybe it was because of past experience, you know, which means that which means that uh, because of a past experience, which. Uh, um, you know, because of which we are discouraged. Maybe certain things were not answered the way we expected, or maybe there was no breakthrough 
in certain areas and and we're saying you know in this area there is you know that sense of unbelief that i'm not able to trust god with this right so yeah so uh, whatever it is you know uh, we can pray that prayer that can be a starting point you know saying that lord i believe but uh, lord help uh, my unbelief i do believe help my unbelief and uh, we can and as the holy spirit gives us an understanding of what that area is you know we can deal with it we can deal with that unbelief um deal with it by fasting and praying um deal with that area of unbelief by building ourselves on the on a most holy faith praying in the holy spirit and we can build ourselves in that area and deal with that unbelief by sowing seeds of um, of the word of god sowing the seed of the word of god and uh, expecting um the seed of the word to bear fruit um and there be a rich harvest right so uh, whatever be that uh, unbelief whatever be that area where we are struggling take take the word and uh, intentionally you know meditate believe um you know get an understanding and uh, so the word of god is sown in our hearts so that we can confess the word and uh, we can walk in freedom and walk in faith right so let's pray okay father we we come before you and like that father prayed lord uh, we just want to pray that prayer lord and certain areas of our life lord we need we need um god deliverance from that unbelief and so we we say oh god i we believe but help our unbelief lord and master lord we ask that you would uh, show us all those areas where we where we need to lord um grow more in faith where we need to trust in you lord wholeheartedly and whatever be our experience of the past lord we choose to leave it in the past and not affect our today and our tomorrows father god we we come before you today and we ask lord that you would um, Lord, there'd be an impartation of your word, impartation of revelation of your word, Lord. And um, yes, Father God, we pray that uh, may your word be sown in our hearts, Lord, and may our hearts, Lord, receive, O oh God, your word. And may the Lord may um, may it be watered and may it be nurtured, Lord, to bear fruit, Lord. Yes, Father God, we we thank you, Lord. May we grow and increase in faith and be strong in faith and um, deal with all kinds of unbelief, Lord. Uh, in Jesus matchless name we pray amen amen okay um okay so uh, we were uh, we were learning uh, we were looking at chapter 6 right and then we looked at uh, you know uh, some of the problem passages in, in the word um so those two passages that um, i think prince mentioned uh, we'll come back to it and i, th I think also uh, nina uh, mentioned nina santosh mentioned about uh, um uh, uh, from first timothy right so we'll we'll come back to it we'll kind of uh, spend some time on it um uh, but today we'll let's look at chapter 7 um let me just share that screen okay let's look at chapter 7 which which gives us an insight into how the lord jesus ministered okay so we you know some things to to consider as the lord ministered or uh, during his earthly ministry how he ministered some things to consider is that uh, well the lord jesus he walked in sonship glory okay so that's that's number one so which means that uh, well he 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 was the um, uh, the pre-existent one in the beginning was the word and the word became flesh and dwelt in us but when he walked on the earth he walked in the glory uh, sonship glory which means he uh, he walked um, not in that glory that he had uh, before he, he uh, you know he uh, the world was and uh, we know that he created so he's the eternal one but he on the earth he walked in sonship glory we studied that right and uh, and that was by the power of the holy spirit so how god anointed him with holy spirit and with power and he went about doing good okay so um the ministry that he did he went by the went uh, he did by the power of the holy spirit and the bible talks about how he went about doing good and destroying every work of the enemy okay so that is something that we need to consider right and uh, and secondly um the lord jesus said he who believes in me will do the works that i do 
and greater works. And this is again linked to the uh, anointing, uh, the presence and power of the Holy Spirit in a person's life. Right. So the Lord says that I go so that I send the, the promise of the Father, the Holy Spirit, who will be with you forever. Right. And um, so, so his ministry, when he ministered the word, was by the power of the Holy Spirit. Okay. So that same ministry is available, or the way he ministered is available for each one of us. So when we study um, how the Lord Jesus ministered the word, for us, it is not just to say, wow, he ministered in such a way, but it's also to say, um, you know, look at ourselves and say, okay, this is something that the Lord made possible for me, for us to walk in, right? Because of the promise of the Father who is indwells me, and because of who I am in Christ Jesus, that I'm one spirit with him, and the spirit of the living God indwells me, right? So, and I have access to the rich resources of the word um, who, again, indwells me, right? So, so with that, let's look at uh, how how the Lord Jesus ministered. Okay, the first thing that we see is that um, what we see in Isaiah 50, which is again a prophetic um, uh, you know, scripture referring to the Lord Jesus, it says, uh, the Lord God has given me the tongue of the learned, that I should know how to speak a word in season to him who is weary. He awakens me morning by morning. He awakens my ear to hear as the learned. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious, nor did I turn away. Right? If you notice verse 4, it says uh, that I should know how to speak a word in season. Okay, A word in season, meaning a word just in time. Okay, You know, when we look at seasons, uh, you know, typically when we look at, uh, you know, uh, maybe agriculture, right? There's a season for sowing and there's a season or a time for reaping, right? So, um, and also when we look at the weather, we know that, okay, this month, there's, this is a season. You know, it's a season when uh, it is cold or it's a season when it's raining. It's a season when it's sunny and it's very hot. So um, a season, a time, a time frame, right? So the Lord, it says here, that I should know how to speak a word in season. Okay. So for us, the same thing that is available. The Lord Jesus, the way he spoke a word in season. He spoke a word. He, when, when he ministered, he spoke, he brought the scripture. It was a word in season. Okay. Uh, for example, if you look at... Um, that time when he was going to Jairus' house and um, his daughter was unwell and there comes news. What is the news? That his daughter is has passed away, like right? his daughter is dead. The Lord immediately turns to Jairus and he says, and he gives this word. It was prompt. It was right there. And I'm sure it meant a lot to Jairus. Because here comes the word saying, don't trouble the master for your child is dead. And then here comes the word, timely prompt from the master. And he says, you know, do not be afraid, only believe. Don't be afraid, only believe. Um, so it was a very timely word. It was like a, like a command, right? So saying, just believe. He put that word um, to um, to this, and uh, and then we know what happened after that. Right? Similarly, um, he spoke um, whenever he spoke. He spoke out of revelation. He spoke out of you know um, understanding um, of the from that came from the Father. That is the next thing that we're going to see. But it was a timely word. It was a word in season. Okay, and uh, what is a word in season? It's a word that is required, that is needed for the people okay, at that time. So, you know, in that season, that is the word that is needed. People are in need. People uh, want that. You know, maybe 
it's a it's a word that that is able to bring them out of despair and bring hope it's a word that is able to move them into action you know whatever could be the scenario right it was a word in season so we know that uh, the prophetic word the prophetic ministry is available for us today right the word as inspired by the holy spirit you know the beautiful thing about it is that sometimes we are well aware okay uh, the lord prepares us the lord gives us and uh, you know we we are well aware okay this is what i'm supposed to bring or this is what i'm supposed to speak uh, and uh, definitely it's going to find its mark okay? so many uh, other times it's a word that is quickened to us and then we and because it bubbles up out of our heart or it is something that the lord has been speaking to us recently you know we we speak it out and in hindsight we find out hindsight meaning you know we share it we go and uh, you know the person responds or gets back with a feedback saying that uh, hey that you know that what you said what you shared um, that was just appropriate that is exactly what we what i needed okay so in hindsight we realize that it was a time we word so whatever it is right so whether it is uh, uh, we will when we when we knew intentionally that that was it that is it that was required or in hindsight it's a timely word so this word in season is something the ministering of word is season is something very very important and the lord jesus did that and so it is available that kind of a ministry is available for all of us right so that is something that we can pursue that is something that we can pray for and uh, and receive and walk in okay a timely word second thing is uh, you know closely tied to that he spoke what he heard the father speak okay if you get john chapter 8 verse 26 28 this is what we see verse 26 i have many things to say and to judge concerning you but he who sent me is true and i speak to the world those things which i heard from him they did not understand that he spoke to them of the father then jesus said to them when you lift up the son of man then you will know that i am he that i do nothing of myself but as my father taught me i speak these things okay so things that we um, learn here that the lord jesus spoke as he heard the father speak to him right um, so he you know you know that he said i and the father are one and uh, we know that you know, our god is a triune god um, and there is community there is fellowship within the trinity right something that is mysterious something that we sometimes we find it difficult to to really comprehend Right, as finite beings, but this is something that the Lord says that uh, you know, I, He who sent me is true, and I speak to the world the things that I heard from Him. Okay, so that is that was an ongoing thing. He heard, He spoke, He received, He gave, and that was again made possible by the ministry of the Holy Spirit, by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, right? Anointing of the Holy Spirit, um, where you receive what the father has we receive those treasures uh, of revelation we receive from god okay um and um, you know if you look at verse 28 it's, he says that as my father taught me i speak these things as my father taught me so to remain teachable to to be expectant and to be in that place saying okay God does not hold back and God wants to teach. Okay, God will teach me some things that are very simple and yet very impactful. He will also teach me some things that are deep and profound that eye has not seen, ear has not heard. Well, the Holy Spirit, He will teach, He will show, you know, to be expectant of that, to say that, yes, the Lord does want to teach. Okay, so it requires time and fellowship right it requires for me to be uh, in that place like just like how you're all logged in it requires me to log in and we and you yourselves know that you can't log in and just because i don't see you uh you can't be doing other things like if you really want to hear and uh, receive so 
um so the thing is that that um yeah um it's not important it's it's in, it's not enough for me to just be locked in but also to receive right so so that's the thing so the lord is saying that i i uh, what what we understand that he was in that constant fellowship he was in constant communion he was in constant conversation and uh, he was receiving and he was doing he was receiving and he was speaking okay he was watching and he was doing so um, he was constantly being taught by the father so so this privilege is available for us you know we, we need to be con sometimes sometimes we uh we 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 count ourselves unworthy we count ourselves disqualified yeah. but this privilege is for us for our, our, us all the believers um every believer you know has this privilege to be taught right so to receive and the holy spirit leads us the holy spirit guides us into all truth the holy spirit takes us to the presence of god presence of the father and uh, and uh, you know this is something that is available for us okay john chapter 7 um verse verse 16 jesus answered and said to them my doctrine is not mine but him but his who sent me okay so the the teaching the mysteries the truth that is there uh, which is really uh, something something profound something that was um, you know even in paul's life you know things that were not um, that was a that was hidden you know mysteries that things that were hidden for us to find okay um, mysteries uh, things that were hidden for us to discover so not hidden so that we will never find but things that were revealed right as as god intended for us to seek and find so um so the lord is saying you know that my doctrine is not mine but him but his who sent me so paul talks about that and he says uh, in um, in that scripture 1 corinthians um, chapter 1 right or is it chapter 2 just one second let me just read that um okay 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verses uh, 9 and 10 right but as it is written i has not seen nor ear heard nor have entered into the heart of man the things which god has prepared for those who love him but god has revealed them to us through his spirit for the spirit searches all things yes the deep things of god so he's saying you know uh, things that has not not been received not not available for the natural senses things that um, even has not come into the heart of man um, but god chooses to reveal okay so that's the heart of god he desires for us to know he desires for us to walk in that revelation so god chooses to reveal that um, by the holy spirit Okay, so that's something that we see. Okay, what else? Uh, how else did he speak? How else did he minister? It says in John chapter 7, we read about that uh, incident where, um, well, people are sent, the guards are sent to actually arrest him. Okay, let's, uh, let's turn to John chapter 7, and maybe we can read a few verses before that, maybe verse 42 onwards. Um, yeah. Okay. The yeah um, verse forty three. Now there was a division among the people because of him. Now some of them wanted to take him, but no one laid hands on him. Then the officers came to the chief priests and Pharisees, who said to them, "Why have you not brought him?" Which means that they were sent with this assignment to to arrest to bring him. So why have you not brought him? Um, the officers answered, no one ever spoke like this man. Then the Pharisees answered, are you also deceived? Et cetera, et cetera. And, uh, and then, you know, so they said, no one ever spoke like this man. So in the, in the way that he taught them, the way that he spoke, um, they, were, they were astounded. They, even though they were sent with the assignment to, to Know, to arrest him and bring him they were amazed by the words that they heard and matthew 13 talks about that it says when people were astonished people were so uh, amazed by the by the truth that he shared and so they exclaimed you know, matthew 13 54 they said where did this man get this wisdom 
and these mighty works okay wisdom and the mighty works going together right so um wisdom so when we look at wisdom we see that um, um it is uh, the ability to apply the truth right apply knowledge apply all understanding and experience so it's the ability to do that and when we look at wisdom one characteristic of wisdom is that it is uh, very practical okay it's something that you do it's something that you're able to apply that's wisdom okay so this is how i need to speak this is how i need to order my life this is how i need to you know it could it will be about various areas various aspects of my life of one's life right so that is wisdom so um, so here are these people who are astonished and they're saying that where did this man get this wisdom you know so it which means that they were astounded by the simplicity they were astounded by the the complex things that he shared uh, they were astounded by the fact that hey this is something that is that is something that i can apply in my life okay um so that is the ability of wisdom wisdom unlocks okay unlocks certain areas um, that uh, were previously closed that were locked uh, it just unlocks it's like a key right and you apply it and suddenly it opens up opens our understanding and opens uh, you know whatever was closed to us there's an open wisdom opens unlocks and we're able to walk in that right so um so they it it was very impactful for them you know, the the wisdom with which he spoke um and you know if you if you look at um, uh let's look let's look at that verse matthew 13 matthew 13 and um, okay uh, Matthew 13 and was this um, 54, right? Yeah. 54. So they say, where did this man get this wisdom? Okay. So if you um, if you if you look at verse 53, it says, uh, now it came to pass when Jesus had finished these parables. So the verses prior to that, right from uh, right from chapter 13 onwards. Um, the parable of the sower, the parable, and then he talks about the, you know, um, explains that parable of the wheat and tares, parable of the mustard seed, the parable of the leaven, um, again, um, the hidden treasure, pearl of great price, the parable about the dragnet, all these he is actually ministering, he is sharing, right? He is giving them, uh, um, he's um, teaching them. And so um, they, they hear all that and and this is their response to all this. This is the response to the message. They hear this. They hear this teaching, and obviously, it has um, it has really unlocked certain things in their minds. Right? Unlock. Okay, this is how I have access to the kingdom of God. Um, this is what it means uh, when I hear the word. You know, this is how I can have thirty, sixty, hundredfold. Um, and uh, you know, this is what is required of me. Um, that there is a, some amount of sacrifice that I, you know, it's it's valued worth so much that I can sell everything and still go and take possession of what is valuable, you know, like the pearl of great price. So it, it unlocks something, unlock the understanding, gave them understanding. So then they come to that conclusion, you know, where did this person get this wisdom, right? So he he ministered in wisdom. Now, um, now the thing is that the same thing is available for us that God wants his children god wants his ministers to to minister in the same way to walk with walk in wisdom okay um so so we see those um, that he walked in wisdom and he that is available for us as well fourthly okay so he spoke with authority okay he spoke with authority um let's look at uh, luke chapter 4 verses 31 and 32 um, then he went down to Capernaum, a city of Galilee, and was teaching them on the Sabbaths, Sabbath. And they were astonished at, at his teaching, for his word was with authority. His word was, was with authority. So if you um, look at that word, you know, authority, uh, what does it mean? It means having the power, having the right to give orders, to make decisions, to enforce 
something okay uh, or uh, having a person or uh, a, an organization having ability to enforce right so he spoke with authority he did not speak as someone who did not have conviction okay so what gives authority is conviction when you know that you know that you know then you're able to do things with authority when you know that it is the truth when you know and you are convinced right and uh, that this is what it is when there is no double mindedness and right? when you're single minded when you're focused then you're able to communicate something with authority when you're able to we are able to you know do things with authority so his word or the the word that he communicated was with that with conviction it came from a place of conviction it place came from a place of truth okay so um so for us also you know the same kind of um ministry is available that we can speak with authority you know i'm sure you know uh, when there's a difference between when we when we when you're speaking from a place of okay i heard about it and i'm saying you know or you know i i'm not sure if this is true when you speak that that doesn't come with authority right but when you speak from a place of knowing from a place of having received understanding from a place of being convinced yourself from a place of experience okay um having engaged with the truth you know, when you talk about the word of god okay when you share the word of god having spent time having received having having the words speak to you right not just you know read it but having the word spoken to your heart right ministered to your heart when you from me when you share from that place of um conviction deep intimacy and con uh, and confidence right and knowing we speak authoritatively right so the lord spoke with authority okay authority again is uh, comes from a place of intimacy with the father okay so earlier we saw whatever he saw whatever he heard the father that is what he spoke the authority comes from a place of intimacy right um if uh, i'm sure you've seen children you know uh, they so they're boasting about their parents right they're boasting you know my dad can do that my mom can do that and they're so confident about their parents is they trust the place of con confidence because of their intimacy right and uh, that intimacy gives birth to authority right so he walked in intimacy he walked in that intimate relationship with the father and uh, that birthed the authority that he spoke with okay um so that same thing is available for us when we walk in intimacy when we walk with conviction when we walk with you know having the words spoken uh, to our hearts and not just a superficial uh, engagement you know with the word with the bible you know we will also speak with authority okay so he spoke with authority and that's something available for us okay um firstly he ministered with a meek heart okay so meekness or humility is was something that uh, was something that is that characterized the ministry of the lord jesus you know it's a it's a very powerful combination or a very potent combination right he ministered with authority he ministered with wisdom he ministered with from a place of intimacy right having received um and, and all that and he ministered with humility okay matthew chapter 11 28 29 the lord says about himself he says come to me all you labor and are heavy laden and i will give you rest take my yoke upon you and learn from me for i am gentle and lowly in heart and you will find rest for your souls he's saying you know this is who i am this is how i am okay um proverbs 16:21 the wise in heart shall be called prudent and sweetness of the lips increases learnings okay so we see that um, he uh, the lord jesus is the character 
uh, at the core of his heart that he was hum he was humble he was um it came from a place of humility so he ministered with a meek heart okay now you know having received having seen the father having heard the father um having received this revelation and understanding he did not come from a place of you know i'm the expert though he was you know i know everything you know though he knew he came from a place of um humility wanting to minister wanting to help wanting to take others from where they were to where he wanted them to be right so that's something you know that's a very important lesson for uh, for all of us who want to minister or you know who are called to communicate preach the gospel um knowing this that we have the lord as our example that he ministered with a meek heart he ministered uh, with humility okay so something that we see in 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 the book of james is that you know ministering in humility or having a um a humble heart actually positions us for greatness right positions us for um, the grace of god and uh, it's very important that uh, we understand that okay so let's uh, look at james and uh, we look at james chapter 4 okay james chapter 4 um and verse 10 okay uh, but before that let's just read uh, verse 6 but he gives more grace therefore he says god resists the proud but gives grace to the humble okay god resists the proud but gives grace to the humble that's something that we see uh, verse 10 humble yourself in the sight of the lord and he will lift you up so these we see this what is available for us exaltation is available for us grace which we need uh, which is divine character divine empowerment divine enablement unmerited favor um is available like for us freely it is given and uh, he, he said this the promise is that he gives more grace right and we need that and what unlocks more grace um is humility okay god resists the proud okay now we cannot have pride because of our learning we cannot have pride because of the anointing and if we come to that place of pride you know it's it's terrible to have god resist us you know it's one thing to have people resist people reject it's one thing to have powers of darkness resist right and which we you know that challenge is always there but it's another thing to have all together to have god resist us right it says god resists the proud but gives grace to the humble okay so uh, to have god push back against us is something that you and i don't want to experience in our lives right so he gives grace to the humble okay so meekness is something that is um, that is required and I'll, again we see that humble yourself in the sight of the lord and he will lift you up so exaltation uh, comes um, or follows uh, humility the lord raises us up as we humble ourselves in his presence so proverbs also talks about the fact that um honor you know uh, honor uh, before humility uh, sorry uh, i get the verse uh, the order and before uh, honor follows humility right or before uh, honor is humility so that's the right order so with humility there is always honor there is exaltation right so he ministered like that he ministered in that way and uh, to and to have meekness is to be wise in heart to have meekness is to be wise in heart so this meekness uh, this humility um humility precedes honor okay yeah thank you right so um so having this um uh, having this humility is not a weakness you know having this humility is not uh, is not is not self abasement in the sense it's not putting ourselves down you know? sometimes we we 
we have a wrong understanding of humility. We have a wrong understanding of uh, how this meekness works, right? So it, we, we, we think that, OK, it, it means that uh, uh, being less confident. Okay? It means uh, not walking confidently or not saying or not speaking up or you know being quiet all the time, you know, maybe you know, such a meek person. No, it's not that. It doesn't mean that, OK, you are like a doormat Right. Uh, whatever people say, whatever people do, that you don't, you know, you, you don't speak things, you don't speak up, or you don't stand firm. That's not that's not how it is. Right? So um, it it is understanding who you are, understanding our position in Christ. It is calling ourselves the way Jesus calls us. It is um, you know affirming, acknowledging, and affirming what we have become in Christ Jesus. You know that's true. Uh, humility that's true meekness right so uh, he ministered with that uh, meekness uh, in his heart okay um next one okay we're almost reaching the end of uh, so he, he used scripture extensively he quoted scripture and uh, the uh, the scriptures that he he quoted was from the from the Old Testament, from the, you know, from the prophets, the law, and the prophets extensively. In fact, uh, that is one of the, you know, tests of the canon of Scripture. Right, the Lord Jesus quoted from from the uh, from the Psalms. He quoted from uh, the, the prophetic uh, scriptures and so on. You know, so many instances. Uh, many in all is uh, you know we see right through. Um, the Lord quoting from scripture. So he used um, uh, Old Testament scriptures while preaching and teaching. And, and so should we, you know, not just the Old Testament, but the Old and the New. Uh, what the Bible talks about, you know, a person who is uh, learned, will wise, will bring out of the treasure uh, both old and new, out of the out of the house, both old and new. So, um, so when we use the old, we use it in context. We use we apply it in context, uh, in the context of the cross, right? We you know, with no understanding the dispensation, and we use that and we apply that. So, uh, Old Testament and New Testament scriptures are, are available for us. So, in the ministry of the word, he used the truth of scripture to teach the people, right? He he quoted, he uh, he taught them, and uh, in his in his ministry. Okay, so that's something for us to, uh, you know, it's we can't say that oh, it's too old-fashioned. I will not use scripture. No, I will just teach. I will just speak. No, our reference point is always the Word of God, right? Um, so we always base it on the Word of God, whatever we teach. Right. So that's that. That's something because the Word of God has power. The Word of God, you know, like we studied. Uh, it has to be based on the Word of God because the Word of God is life. The Word of God is alive, powerful, you know, eternal or deep, uh, permanent transformation comes because of the power of the God, power of God's Word. It's the Word that produces life. So we are born again by the Word of God. So we are washed by the Word of God. Uh, a person receives conviction, and it's by the it's by the Word uh, through the Holy Spirit. So, so all that. You know, a person's faith increases because of the word. A person is able to, you know, do great exploits because of the understanding of the word of God. And um, you know, it's uh, scripture is very clear. It says that uh, all scripture is God breathed. Um, let's read that, and is given for a particular, uh, given for a purpose that the man of God, a woman of God, might be. Thoroughly equipped for every good work. So, when we have this word, when we have such a uh, you know resource, so we need to base our ministry on the word of God. We need to base our communication of truth um, based on the word of God, right? So, um, so that's um, yeah. So let's um, let's look at that verse. Second Timothy three verse sixteen, all Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable or beneficial for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete or brought to a place of maturity, thoroughly equipped for every good work. 
Okay, so all scripture, which which is the old and the new, is given by the inspiration of God. So, so the Lord, you know, we we saw how he <clears throat> uh, he how he refuted the um, the attack or the temptation and the tests uh, that came to him um, by through Satan. He refuted everything with the word of God. He refuted everything by saying, "It is written." It is written. It is written. So he knew the word. He himself was the word. We know that he knew the word. Like he he used the declared the word to uh, to come against to refute every accusation, every lie of the enemy. Okay. So we base it on the word. Okay. So we we see that he also used parables and illustrations, like we see Matthew chapter thirteen, that whole chapter. You know, several parables to bring true truth to people to make sure that people understood the truth. Okay, so earthly stories with the heavenly perspective, heavenly uh, you know meaning and truth. So drawing that parallel, illustrating it, okay, so that it is easy to understand. It's easy to apply. Okay? What we do not understand, we will not apply. Right. If we, uh, you know, if first of all he shared the truth, but he shared it in a way that people could receive, people could understand. So, with the revelation comes, with the understanding, you know, with the revelation comes conviction. Right. So only when I understand, am I convinced? Am I convinced? Uh, and only when I'm convinced do I put it to practice. Right. And we know that revelation, conviction, action. Right. So only when there is understanding is there conviction, and which leads to action. So unless I un unless I uh, I'm, I understand, I will not be moved to act. Right? You know. So it's very important. So he used parables, he used illustrations in order to make people understand. Right. And um, a couple of other things: uh, the power of God was present. God. Um, confirmed or uh, authenticated everything that was ministered, the truth that was shared uh, with his presence. Right? And when in his presence, there is power. So the power of God was present. We read that was present to heal and deliver and so on. Um, and lastly, he, he ministered out of compassion. He was not detached. He was very engaged. Why did he minister out of compassion? He was moved with compassion when he saw the needs, need of people, right? So, which means that um, he uh, his heart was there with the people. He engaged with the the need. He understood the need of the people, and he moved. Uh, he ministered out of that place of compassion. Okay, so we see all this, and we see that the Lord ministered in this manner so it's for us to uh, you know expand our understanding uh, how he ministered and also to to apply in our own lives and say lord the way you ministered i want to minister the way you shared lord communicated lord we want to communicate with authority with wisdom and in all these wonderful ways right okay so we'll stop here and we'll catch up um, tomorrow and tomorrow, hopefully, we'll meet uh, in person. Um, right. Thank you, online students, all of you online students today. God bless. Have a good day.